I'm Diane Rogers and today I want to show you what to do with garlic scapes. They're all over at the markets right now because a lot of the farmers that grow garlic have to cut the seed head off which is the garlic scape in order to achieve or to grow out a really nice garlic bulb. Having said that you don't want to waste these. They're really really good. Now there's a lot of uses for it, but I'm just going to show you one that's fast and easy and also you can preserve it in the freezer or the refrigerator and then do other things with it once you process it. Okay, I'm going to show you what to do with escapes. This is just one of many uses, but this way you can keep it in the refrigerator or the freezer ready for use at any time, adding or taking away whatever kind of ingredients you want. Now, what you have to do first, you're going to go to the local farmer's market, because I don't think you're going to find these in a grocery store, and you're going to find a farmer that has the scapes. And if you look at these, the seed is on top, this long pointy part. And when they start to curl over, this is the stalk, when they start to cur curl over is when they should be cut from the garlic plant itself. So there's usually, I have a lot of garlic in my backyard. Now I take mine off anywhere between like this size, which is fairly thin, to somewhere a bit smaller and some did grow out to a bit larger. If you have your choice in the farmer's market, I pick a medium size. There, the stalk end is a lot less tough. You'll lose a lot less when you trim it. Now there's two ways to trim it. On the larger ones, if you bend this back, it will naturally snap where it's kind of tough. However, another way to tell is look at the color. It's a lighter green going up to a darker green. Here, let's look at another one. Here's one. See where it's lighter green here and it gets darker green until it comes up to the seed head, then it gets lighter again. So this is a smaller one. This will probably, yep, that snapped off easy. Now what you can also do if they're on the smaller size is just take the end and trim it off because the small ones are quite tender and what I've already done is cleaned up a bunch of them. Now, since we're going to process this into a garlic scape kind of a pesto, but I'm not going to put the basil in it now. Um, what I'm going to do is just make uh, much like a sort of a chimichurri sauce, a lot of garlic with some pecorino, though Parmesan Reggiano is really good, and some pine nuts, olive oil, but because I'm using pecorino, I'm gonna be careful on how much salt to put in. Parmesan Reggiano, you could put a little bit more salt because it's not as salty as the pecorino, which is sheep's, sheep's milk cheese. So what I've done with these is I've cut them because I'm using a blender. Now you can use a processor too. I like the blender because it makes a more smooth puree, much like making hummus. If you want a really smooth hummus, the blender's the way to go. So I cut them into one to two inch pieces. Doesn't have to be all that exact. And they're gonna go into the blender. And then what I'm going to do is add a little bit of olive oil to start processing this with. I'm going to, because it needs something to catch at the bottom. So after I put in just a little bit, all right, so in the blender, blender really does a nice job. Blender does a great job. I'm scraping this down a little bit and Put it back on. Add more oil. This takes quite a 
bit of oil to make a nice paste out of it. And I like either an Italian or a Spanish extra virgin olive oil because you don't have that many ingredients going in here. So you want to make the few ingredients you have the best. Now, I added quite a bit, like I added half of that bottle and you can see how thick it still is. So the cheese is going to thicken it too. So what I'm going to do is put the lid on. I'm going to squeeze a little bit of lemon juice in here too, just to brighten it a little bit. We'll turn it back on. Oh boy, well that did take some olive oil, but oh my gosh, isn't that beautiful? It's nice, pretty green for sure. It's a beautiful puree. And now what I'm gonna do is the cheese is in there. I'm just gonna taste this really quick to see where it is, if it needs more cheese or not. Yes, it does. So we're gonna add the rest of this pecorino in a couple chunks. And then I'm going to add some pine nuts. A couple little handfuls. You could add walnuts, almonds, sort of any nut that you like. I like pine nuts just because. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of salt. And on it goes again. Okay, now let's see what we've got. Oh, beautiful puree, just gorgeous. See how pretty that is? All right, so we have to taste this again. Mm -hmm. Now, what you're gonna find by using the garlic scapes raw is that it's gonna be very, very pungent. But on a slice of bread, on tomatoes, on a pizza, um, it, it mellows out quite a bit. But as they cook, they mellow. Much like when you roast a garlic clove, the whole um, head of garlic, and use it as a garlic paste, it's a really mild flavor. Same thing with this. So this is gonna be kind of strong. However, when you put it as a spread on bread or on tomatoes or on a pizza or whatever, it won't be quite as strong. What I wanna do, to brighten the flavor up just a little bit more is I'm gonna add just a little bit more lemon to it. And... This is really good. Now what we've got is this beautiful, gorgeous puree that if you keep this covered with oil in the refrigerator You'll find all sorts of uses for it. Use it as a seasoning. Anything that you'd use garlic. It can be a seasoning for soup. It can be a dipping sauce for steak. You, it can be tossed up with pasta. It can be used on rice. A little blob on tomatoes. I have some Tennessee tomatoes. It's not quite tomato season up here yet. Drizzle, or put a little blob on top. And then we're gonna coat these with a little bit more olive oil and a tiny sprinkling of salt. Now you could add mozzarella to this. If you find yourself this weekend at the Toledo Farmer's Market, I got these from Small Wonders Farm. They were kind enough to share some with me. Plus I had a bunch of my own, but then I saw some Clay Hill Farms had some, Garden Nursery had some, actually Roger had some last week, and Good Dog Farmstead had some, or Good Dog Homestead. Anyway, take a walk around, and you really should get as many as you can, because once it's over, no more till next year. Okay, again, thanks for joining me. Hope to see you again.